there is a subset of people on the street that require intervention. They just do. I required intervention. If I hadn't gotten in trouble with the law, would I still be out there on the street or dead? Yeah, because there would have been no motivation for me to stop my drug use. My name is Thomas Wool. I'm a San Francisco native and I'm a formerly homeless recovering heroin addict. I spent six months homeless on the street here in San Francisco in 2018 and now I'm an advocate for recovery. Unless we start taking a different direction on how we approach the homeless and drug crisis in San Francisco, the problem's only going to get worse before it gets better. The system, it's kind of broken. I was basically just your kind of typical middle class guy, you know. I had a job with the county, $80,000 a year job with the county. A wife and two kids, I was a homeowner, owned a house out in Daly City. I had foot surgery in early 2015 and they prescribed me roxycodone for the pain when they sent me home from the hospital. And roxycodone is 10 milligram oxycodone tablets, it's an opioid. I ran out of that first bottle of pills which was supposed to last me a month, I ran out of them in about 10 days. I didn't like that feeling of withdrawal. I liked the way it was making me feel. So I actually um, pulled up YouTube, where can I buy oxycodone pills on the street in San Francisco? And uh, there were a few different videos and references to Pill Hill, which is uh, the corner of Golden Gate and Leavenworth in San Francisco in the Tenderloin. And so I actually drove down there and sure enough, I found five or six different people <laughs> that were selling a variety of different types of opioids. So I started buying 30 milligram oxycodone tablets at that point for $30 a piece. I remember I went downtown, I only had $30 in my pocket and I knew $30 would only buy me one pill and that wasn't gonna do it. But I had heard that you can purchase a dime of heroin, uh, which is enough to get you plenty high for 10 bucks. So I walked down the street to Golden Gate and Hyde one block over and I bought my first dime of heroin. One night, I snuck out of the house about two o'clock in the morning, uh, took the car, drove down to the Tenderloin, and I didn't come home for 11 days. Got home, and my wife was waiting for me with a packed bag, saying, you either gotta go to rehab, or you need to get out. And at that point that I went home, I was in withdrawal from heroin at that moment, and I wasn't ready to go to rehab. So, um, I walked, I walked out. And for the next six months, I spent every night on the street, pretty much on the 300 block of Golden Gate Avenue in the Tenderloin. The thought of actually getting better, I didn't really think about those things until I um, encountered the police and I started getting arrested. It's not a good feeling. Each time that I went, it actually made me stop and think like, man, I can't keep doing this anymore. It wasn't until the sixth time that I was, I'd been released five times already, I was back out on the street wearing an ankle monitor and I violated my stay away order and it let the sheriffs know. I hadn't showered in a week, I hadn't shaved in weeks, hadn't brushed my teeth in weeks. My hands were permanently stained black from the soot from smoking foil on heroin. Uh, mentally, I was a broken man and they came and arrested me and then I spent about three months in jail at that point and that's when I, I guess I got clean. There's a whole argument around civil liberties, right? So the ACLU talks about that a lot. And they're wrong on this one. They just are. So if you're out there struggling with addiction and you have MRSA, or you have, you have sepsis, and you have open abscesses on your legs, and you're clear, clearly in crisis, right? Sitting there on the street with a needle sticking out of your neck. We as a society, are we just gonna say, that's his choice? From my experience of living on the street, eight out of every 10 of the people that I encountered that were homeless on the street were struggling with drug addiction. It goes hand in hand. Do we have like moms and families and stuff that are homeless? Absolutely, we do. But the people that are visible that you see every day when you go downtown, almost every single one of them is struggling with drug addiction. Either it's meth addiction or heroin addiction and now fentanyl addiction. And you know, numbers don't lie. I'll just take people and show them, hey, look, this is where I used to sleep on the street. Those are the drug dealers over there on the corner, and they're on that corner, and that corner, and that corner, and that corner, too. While everybody else's business is going out of business in San Francisco, drug dealing is booming. 
in this town. That's a fact. And I'm not doing that to bring down San Francisco because I love San Francisco, I'm from here. But in order for it to get better, we all have to stop and open our eyes and look at what the heck is really going on out there because it's out of control. It's out of control and yes, we need more housing, but if you don't start treating some of these root issues that start with addiction and kind of explode from there, um, and it's gonna be a long, hard road out of, out of the mess that we're in right now.